and it's time for church. Let us, in like manner, approach the kingdom of God, the creator of all things. In like manner, which his son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. And lead us not into temptations, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory is thine forever and ever. Amen. The kingdom of God would like to speak today. The 24 elders would like to speak today. He that is holy will speak today. The Holy Spirit that bears witness of Christ and those that call themselves the sons of God will speak today. And as you hear their voice, harden not your heart as they did in the days of provocation where they tempted the Holy Spirit during the time of their exodus. 40 years in the wilderness. And every time God spoke and every time God used the Spirit of God to speak to them, they hardened their hearts. And they did as they pleased. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Blessed be his holy name. This week is Holy Week. And though there are many festivals that are going forth in our land, there is only one that is in remembrance and only one that is accepted in the kingdom of God. And that is the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The kingdom of God would like to speak today concerning the trial of the Son of God. To put us in remembrance, hallelujah, of a man that was killed, who was innocent, who took upon your sins and the sins of this world that God may have mercy upon this earth and those that are inhabitants of it. And to loose the bonds of the one called Lucifer who had taken the keys of hell, death, and the grave. And as men would die their souls and their spirits will be imprisoned in the halls of this earth. None to release them. Because men cannot keep the Ten Commandments. And because men cannot keep, keep the Ten Commandments, they will die in their sin. Because the law says if you break one of those laws, you have broken them all.
But God did not leave himself without a remnant. He did not leave himself without a witness. He did not leave himself without a bloodline. To bring forth redemption to man. And to take back the keys that held the souls that died. There is a place called paradise. This is where the righteous went. Not those that want to be good, but those that kept the laws of God perfectly. And the word of God is recorded of those that did. Abraham, Elijah, Enoch, Isaiah, all that are recorded in the books kept the laws perfectly. Even the one of Mary and Joseph in which the Lord would come through. They were the descendants of Aaron and the descendants of David. But those that could not keep the law, their end was to end up in the pit, in the place called hell, their bodies forever locked into the graves, that they will see desolation and corruption. In the word of God that did not see corruption such as Enoch whose body was translated such as Elijah that God sent a chariot of fire to gather him in the front of many prophets and brought him to the place called the kingdom of God. But the rest of mankind had no redemption. Amen. Today, the kingdom of God would like to share concerning the trial of an innocent man. One that knew no sin. One that broke no laws. One that served God completely. One that allowed the Holy Spirit to lead him. One that sat with disciples and discipled others to teach them the ways of God. One that spoke with those that were in the kingdom of God, Elijah and Moses, that was seen by disciples as he spoke with them. A man that was brought to shame, who was beaten beyond recognition, his face marred so badly that he was not even recognized as human anymore. His face beaten and slapped and swollen from over 2,000 soldiers that beat him through the night. Because he said he was the son of God. Let's begin the trial. 
let the trial of Jesus Christ begin. The book of Matthew, chapter 26. The book of Matthew, chapter 26, verse 47. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staffs, from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he who betrayed him gave them a sign saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore are you come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again your sword into his place. For all they who take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled, that thus it must be? In that same hour, said Jesus to the multitudes, Are you come out as against a thief with swords? and staffs for to take me. I sat daily with you, teaching in the temple, and you laid no hold on me. But all this was done, that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. And they that had laid hands on Jesus laid him away, led him away to Cephas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. But Peter followed him afar off unto the high priest's palace and went in and sat with the servants to see the end. Now the chief priests and elders and all the council sought false witness against Jesus to put him to death, but found none. Yes, though many false witnesses came, yet found they none. At the last, they came forth two witnesses and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and to build it in three days. And the high priest arose and said unto him, Answer thou nothing? What is, what is it which these witnesses against you? But Jesus held his peace. And the high priest answered and said unto him, I adjure you by the living God that you tell us whether you be the Christ the Son of God. Jesus said unto him, You have said. Nevertheless, I say unto you, Hereafter shall you see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest 
rent his clothes, saying, you have spoken blasphemy. What further need have we of any more witnesses? Behold, now you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They answered and said, he is guilty of death. Then did they spit in his face and buffet him, and others smote him with the palm of their hands, saying, Prophesy unto us, thou Christ, who is he who smote thee? Thus begins the trial of the Son of God. He was taken in the cover of night. Though he sat among those elders and councilmen, though he sat before those that were called pastors, preachers, scribes, though he sat among those that were called elders every day, none laid their hand on him. But they came in the darkness of night against the laws of Israel, illegally taking in imprisonment, someone that was supposed to come before the councils. Because all was not present. Nicodemus was not present. Hallelujah. Ananias was not present. There were 71 of the Sarians, the councils that were present, and there were supposed to be 73. The Cathias and 71 of the councils and elders of the people of Israel into imprisonment Jesus of Nazareth in the cover of night and they brought him into the judgment court and while he was there they blindfolded him while he was there they had over 2,000 soldiers. Those that was for Romans and those that was under the leadership of the elders and the councilmen to begin to beat him and to spit upon the Son of God. Then they brought forth false witnesses. At first they could not find any that would speak against him. None of their testimonies were agreeable. But then they found two. They said, we heard him say, he was going to tear down the temple and in three days build it back up. So the councilman asked him, do you deny these accusations? And he answered not a word. Then the councilman, under the darkness of night, while three other councils were not yet present, they told him falsely. And they asked him, Are you the Son of God? He said, I am. They cried out, 
We don't need any more witnesses. We have heard it for ourselves. Blasphemy. One that calls himself equal with God. One that says he walks with him. One that says God honors him. We have heard it for ourselves. He has said he is equal to God. He says he speaks one on one with God. He says the Spirit of God dwells with him. He says that the powers that he moves in, it is God that uses him. Blasphemies! For you see the elders. And the sergeants. And the scribes. And the councilmen. They have fallen. Abandon the ways of God. Though they would still do the Passover, the slaying of the lambs, the remembrance of the exodus from Egyptians. Blasphemy! Hallelujah. 
Glory to God. But Jesus did answer them this one thing. He said unto them, Nevertheless, hereafter, after all this and that which you shall do, because it has been spoken and prophesied and allowed by my Father, after this shall you see the Son of Man, and I will be sitting on the right hand of power. The elders and the scribes and the shahadels, the councilmen, they were called. They knew what that meant. It meant, and I will be your judge. Blessed be his holy name. Let's turn to the book of Mark. Hallelujah. Glory to God. One of the disciples snuck inside the chambers where they took Jesus under the darkness of night to trial him unfairly. One snuck in to see what the end will be. Hallelujah. And his name was Peter. We're going to go to the account of Mark. In the 14th chapter, hallelujah, amen. We are putting on trial Jesus Christ, the one that said he is the Son of God. Hallelujah. I would love to say, today we are celebrating. I would love to say, today we are being reminded or remembered of it. Doing a memorial of it. But sad to say, Really what is going on in this world today is that every day the Son of God who will be your judge is being put on trial every day. Hallelujah. The record of the trial that was to come is recorded in the book of Isaiah and chapter 53. Every day we deny that Jesus is the Son of God and our judge. Every day we trample upon the sacrifice of his blood and remain in sin and go back into sin and choose not to serve him at all. He becomes your judge. Today, he is the suffering servant. to be the Lamb of God. 
But the day is coming when he will be your judge. And everyone that denies him, he said it with his own words by the Holy Spirit. That this gospel will be preached to every nation and every tongue. And it's going to continue even until the last breath of this world. Isaiah chapter 53. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Many have said that Jesus is their Lord. He's my personal Savior. But he is not truly the Lord of your lives. Isaiah wrote by the Holy Spirit that which was going to happen to the Son of God. One that knew no sin but became your sin. That it may have pleased the law of God. Where blood sacrifices had to be made as an atonement for all that you do to injure God's heart. Jesus became the perfect lamb Sinless, without fault, his blood is unblemished with sins. Never again a lamb has to be slain. Never again a goat has to be killed. Never again a turtle dog must be killed for your sin, for your transgressions, for your iniquities. But do you believe the report? You who said, I understand and I see, do you really see? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form, no calmliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as if our faces from him. We, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely, he has borne our griefs. He has carried our sorrows. Yet, we did esteem him stricken. He was smitten of God. And he was afflicted. But he was wounded for our trespasses. He was bruised for our iniquities. 
the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed. He was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was brought up as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before his shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgressions of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death because he had done no violence neither was any deceit found in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief when you shall make his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper him in his land. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he has poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors. He bore the sin of many and made intercessions for the transgressors. This is the writings of the prophet Isaiah. As he was shown by God, what shall happen to the Messiah? Thus beginning the trial of the Son of God. And yet every day, the name of the Son of God is dragged within the streets. Every day, it is taken in vanity and in vulgarness. Every day, you swear, and you have no power on your head to swear. Every day, you bring Jesus back through the trial, back through the darkness. Every day, just as the elders, and those 73 minus three councils and the scribes and the high priest of Israel took the Son of Man, the Son of God, illegally, in disgrace, and brought him into a judgment hall.
and called him a liar. That he was not the son of God. Blasphemy. Where the scripture says, those that are led by the spirit, they are the sons of God. Was not Jesus led by the Holy Ghost? Did he not fast being led by the Holy Ghost? Did he not do the works of miracles and healings? Even forgiving the unforgivables by the Spirit of God? And yet we say he is not the son of God. A man. A God. A son. A savior. Paul says you are sons of God. Jesus was the Son of God. Every day, Jesus is taken into the hidden courts, the hidden courts of this land, the hidden courts of politics, the hidden courts of racial divisions, the hidden courts of hatreds, the hidden courts of your rebellion and constantly tried that he is not the son of God, that he is not the lamb of God, that he was not righteous, that he did not do as God said for him to do. And so we can celebrate the Son of God, Jesus Christ, on side of rabbits, on side of Easter hunts, on side of pagan holidays. Because you have counted him just one of those gods. But Jesus said in that judgment hall, hereafter, I will sit on the right hand of power of the Most High. And they understood exactly what he meant. That he will be their judge. Here is the trial of Jesus Christ. Trialed every day. His name trampled upon every day. The laws of God broken every day. Lies of confessions, professions, and repentance every day. Why you erect the name of God on side of your Easter celebrations? Those that be the sons of God. As the apostle Paul said, you should be led by the Spirit of God and not of yourselves. Here lies the trial of Jesus Christ. Some are in remembrance of the Son that came, a redeemer, that
that brought us back. A savior that shed his blood. Why others celebrate pagan holidays such as Easter? Choose with God you will serve. Choose what son you will be. Here ends the meaning for today. We are in the time of remembrance. When we say God is God and his son is the Lord but he is not Lord of your lives you still do just what you want to do if you want to escape the time of judgment because Jesus says, after this, I will sit on the right hand of power. That means he will become your judges. If you want to escape the judgment that is coming, the word of God says, when the Holy Spirit begins to prick your heart, lead you as a son out of sin. Do not harden your hearts. Do not say another day. Do not say it is too soon. Do not say I am not ready. Do not say we still got time. But if you want, repent. And not tempt the Spirit of God as they did in the 40 years inside of the wilderness where they murmured and complained and continued to break the laws of God and to avoid God leading them. Then say this prayer and from this day forth the Spirit of the Lord will join himself to you and he will lead you through the Word of God. He will open up the Scriptures and the long arm of God will be revealed. Father God, I hear the reading of the Scriptures and I Testify that what I am hearing by the Spirit of God is real. Father, I commend myself to you. I surrender myself to you. To lead me. To guide me. To be my God. I believe that my sins are covered with the blood of Jesus and I will go into discipleship and be baptized on the water in the name of Jesus Christ and I will be filled with the Holy Spirit who will endow me with power to live this life and to be a witness unto others with signs, with wonders in Jesus' name, amen.